Welcome to a new edition of the Neon Jazz Interview Series with Danish jazz singer Sine E. She talked about her new project, The San Gabriel 7. It's a 2022 CD called Under the Stars. We caught up with her to talk about this, other new projects, COVID life, live shows, and so much more. On her latest project, she joins this progressive funk band, San Gabriel 7, to grace the project with her vocals. The last time we talked was in 2018. The world is a much different place these days. Enjoy this conversation. Good morning. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm great. Hey, it's great to talk to you again. Thanks for taking a minute out. Sure. So, the last time we spoke, there was a whole different thing going on on Earth. And, you know, since COVID, things have been kind of turned upside down. How have you been doing? Well, I've been doing pretty okay. Of course, it's, you know, everybody's had a difficult time. I think we've been lucky here in Denmark that we haven't had, like, uh, years of lockdown or or no... um, gig activities. I mean, we've been kind of open and closed and open and closed, which is confusing, but we have been able to get out and work from time to time. So that's been uh, that's been really good. Yeah, that is good. So over this time of, of COVID and, and everything, what did you learn about? Did you learn anything different, acquire any skills that are going to make you stronger now? <laughs> yeah. Uh, especially during the first lockdown, I was very active, you know, trying to learn new stuff. I practiced a lot, and and I learned to use uh, Pro Tools, so I can record myself now. And so, I mean, that yeah, I've, I've kind of learned a lot. Also, a little bit of video editing, and and also practice my um, piano skills and working on my improvisation. And and I've been writing. Uh, quite a bit uh, for for this new project also uh, with SG7 and so I've, I've been keeping kind of busy. Well, this project with San Gabriel the Seven, it's it's kind of a funk. It's kind of like a different kind of vibe. Talk to me about being involved with this project and what it's mean what what it's meant for you. You're right. It is a, a different vibe than you usually hear uh, from me. I'm a guest on this project, so I I kind of wanted to do whatever I could to adapt to what they have been doing. But also knowing that I can't sing, you know, funk. <laughs> and I don't, I don't sing much groove music, but, but I kind of thought, okay, I'm going to do my best, and I'm going to write stuff that I can still relate to, but also meet them where they are. And, and it's a kind of a, yeah, we've just been working on finding somewhere like a, a ground in the middle where we could all like do do what we do best together so that's been fun um and and a challenge a good challenge how did you all run into each other how did you say yeah this is the kind of project i want to be involved with well it it was funny because i i I received an email from uh jim lewis who's the founder and 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 the leader of the of san gabriel seven and uh, he just introduced himself and, and asked if I would be interested in, in writing uh, eight to ten new songs for their group and record. And, and I kind of, at first I thought, oh, I don't know, mm, that, that sounds, I don't know them and who are they? And, but then I kind of, I checked them out and I, I really liked what they did. And I, have, I actually didn't know how he heard about me. Um, but I guess he's just like trying really to look out for singers who also write music. I received an email during the COVID period from James Lewis, and he he's the founder of, of SG7 and and the leader. And I think he's just been looking out for um, the vocalists who also compose and write write songs. Uh, because I think they have um, a little, like, that's a theme for them these years, that they'd like to invite guest vocalists and, and play their music. So I actually don't know how he heard of me, but I've been performing quite a bit in California the past 10 years, so that's, I mean, yeah, that's probably why. Um, so I, he just suggested this project, and I, I at first, like, I was, hmm, I don't know, I have my own projects that I try to work on, but... But then I thought, hmm, now I got all the time, you know, because of COVID. And I just thought it would be fun just to do something else uh, instead of always always writing for my own band and my own projects. I, I thought about it and I, and I 
I thought to myself, maybe this could give me a little bit of artistic freedom because it's, this is for, even though it's for me to sing, it's still, still for someone else. And, um, and that's actually what happened. I started writing and something came easier to me because it was something else. Like it was not the, the usual drill, the usual stuff I'm writing. Um, so that was quite interesting. Um, yeah. <laughs> so what did you enjoy the best about being with this band? It clearly is a, a different kind of thing for you to be involved with, but what was it about, you know, the sound and the interaction that was so pleasing about being involved with this project? Well, it was, it's because it's just, it's, a, it, it's just playing and having fun with music. I really liked that. And, and just, it gave me a lot of freedom to play with musicians that are, are different from from who, who I normally play with. So uh, trying out stuff, you know, singing more groovy songs that I wrote, and that that kind of I mean, it was just liberating, and, and it was kind of playful, and I I just really enjoyed. Also, they're really really nice and really good musicians. Uh, musicians are nice people, so we just had a good time in the studio, and I had a very good process with. Chris Gordon, um, the producer, uh, writing all the songs. He, uh, he even co-wrote uh, some of the lyrics with me. Um, so that was just a nice process to to have someone to work with. Um, you know, I, normally I, I produce my own albums, so I'm kind of alone until I'm there with the band. Um, then everybody chips in on the arrangements. But here there was a producer. Uh, who had ideas and, and was kind of taking a, a lot of responsibility that is usually only my own. So that was just a nice experience as well. What is it that you hope the listener gets from this project? How do you hope they feel about the music you put out there? Um, well, it's again, <laughs> 10 very, very different songs. So, and that's kind of also a little uh, um, daring, I think, to put so such different songs on one album. But I, I just, you know, from from my perspective, I hope people will enjoy hearing me in a, in a different setting than they're used to. And I just, like, I just hope that that each of these songs will will wake up some. Some good feelings, you know, some thoughtfulness, and you know, you know, the the. I, I hope I can make people dance to some of the uh, some of the songs and and groove and yeah, it's just like it's a big journey, you know, the the whole song, uh, the, the whole um, repertoire. There's this there's this like beef rubbish thing, and there's like a, a hymn that could be, have been written for you know church music. And there is um, like <laughs> like it's almost a corny uh, 50, 50s groove song, like a ballad, and it's it's just like a big journey through different genres. But but it tie what ties it all together is that it's all these great musicians, these great horn players that is um, tying it all together with their sound, and of of course my voice too. But um, so I think it kind of makes sense. So, do you have any live gigs lined up or anything f as far as your own work yourself as the world opens up and the year moves forward? Yeah, I do. I mean, I have a, quite a busy summer coming up and, and, and autumn as well. I mean, I'm going back to the States in October. Um, I'm trying to organize that right now, actually. Um, going to L.A., Oakland, Boston, maybe Florida, I don't know. Um and then um, I have this summer. I have some really interesting projects. Um, I'm, right now, I'm practicing for this this big concert series that where we're playing with the Danish Radio Symphony Orchestra. We're doing cartoon music, so <laughs> yeah. I'm singing Jessica Rabbit and and Prince of Egypt, and I'm third pig in the, <laughs> the Three Little Pigs and the Wolf, and uh, yeah, some different stuff. Cool. <laughs> right on. Well, so for this project, where can people pick up or stream Under the Stars and where can listeners get more information on you, your projects, and what's going on with your touring? 
if you feel like listening to Under the Stars, the, the album, I think it's available on, available on all um, the streaming services, Spotify, Apple Music, and 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 of course you can uh, order it through Amazon if you'd like the CD. And check check out my website for you know info on where I'm performing. Um, my website is Cine Music. My my name S I N N E uh, Cine Music dot com. I'm trying to keep that updated. So. Yeah. Man, it's great to really catch up with you. Good luck with this album and the projects as they move forward. It's so great to hear that musicians are back at it. So good luck. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for listening and tuning in to another Neon Jazz interview. We give you a bit of insight into the finest singers and players all over the world giving fans all that jazz. If you want to hear more interviews, go to Famous Interviews with Joe Davino in the iTunes Store. Visit Neon Jazz at YouTube.com. And for everything Neon Jazz, go to the neonjazz.blogspot.com. And for all things Joe Domino, go to joedomino.com. And when you're there, you can donate to the cause via PayPal or Patreon. Until next time, enjoy the jazz, my friends. Neon Jazz.